Earl Flynn, and they died with their boots on, made me a Custer addict. And there are lots of them throughout the country. I was only 12 years old then, but that was during World War II. When the war was over, 1946, I was a senior in high school, and I saved my money. Quarter an hour at Widmer's Drugstore. This is Dayton, Indiana. And I bought a bus ticket and went all over the West. But in Billings, I stopped and took a bus down to Crow Agency. And I had arranged before for the superintendent to meet me. This, uh, and when it was a train, sorry. The train pulled in the Crow Agency and I got off the train and there was this big guy in a Park Service uniform and I met Edward S. Luce. He had been a sergeant in the 7th Cavalry back in the early years of the century, but I noticed at his belt he uh, had a Gary Owen insignia and that stamped him with the 7th Cavalry. Anyway, Luce took me, just a senior in high school, all over the battlefield. Uh, and uh, it was most revealing because we went up to the monument and there was that inscription to the officers and men of the 7th United States Cavalry who perished here fighting against the Indians. So they fed me. Uh, Captain Luce, he called himself Captain Luce because he had been in World War I. And uh, they fed me, he and Evelyn Luce, and they took me down to the bus to go back to Billings and presume my uh, career, my uh, trip. Well, I noticed in the literature that each summer they hired somebody as a historical aide, they called it, to tell the story to the public. And so I wrote to Luce and I said, I want to be one of those. And he wrote back and he said, you have to be 21 years old to uh, work for the government. And you're only 17. But he said, I'll see what I can do. So all that winter, I was in a state of turmoil hoping that he could bring this off. Well, he had some connections in the regional office and he plowed through those and in, in May 1947, just out of high school, I got the letter, come. And I got there fast, I got on the bus went out to Billings and down there, and uh, Luce met me, of course, and he had arranged a place in uh, where the, uh, in Crow Agency, where the nurses at the hospital lived, there was a room, and I got the room, and there was a little greasy spoon in Crow Agency that would open for my breakfast. And this was three miles from Custer Battlefield. By the way, it was Custer Battlefield then, not Little Bighorn Battlefield. It was changed. I had to walk from Crow Agency up to the battlefield every day. 
and I finally got a uniform so that uh, often uh, tourists would stop and pick me up and give me a ride on up. But uh, that was the summer of 47. I uh, got in the habit of being a historical aide. I stood, this was before the museum was built. I stood up uh, at the monument and anyone who drove up, I told them the story of the Little Bighorn as much as they wanted or as little as they wanted. And this was the place to do it because you could point out the Valley of the Little Bighorn was all below you and that's where the Indian village was. So I became quite enamored of the Park Service and Captain Luce became enamored of me. And he wanted me to come back. As it turned out, I came back for five years while I was going to college. But that first year, I, uh, I met a guy from Leeds, South Dakota by the name of R.G. Cartwright. He'd been a veteran of the Great War, but he was all into the Little Bighorn. What happened and where? And he would come each summer and go all over the battlefield looking for clues. And we became good friends. And he said, uh, when you go back home to Indiana, why don't you stop by Lead and I'll show you the Black Hills. Lead is uh, next to Deadwood and it's the home of the Homestake Mining Company, gold mining. But I did that on the way back in September 1947. I'm still 17, and uh, Carty met me, and Carty gave me a tour of the whole Black Hills. And at the end, he said, I want you to meet a friend of mine who lives here in Leed. His name is Charlie Wendolph. And he is the last white survivor of the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Here is this old man of 97 years sitting on his front porch, rocking, and meeting anyone who will come up and sit with him and let him tell stories he's probably told many times. But this is from the perspective of today, when I'm 90. And that was 1947, something like 70 years ago. And Charlie was sitting there 70 years or so after he had been in the Battle of the Little Bighorn. He was a member of Company H, 7th Cavalry, and the commanding officer was Frederick W. Benteen. Anyway, uh, Cardi took me down there, and Charlie was sitting on his front porch. It was a glorious day in his rocking chair. And I was taken up and shook hands with this man who had been in the Custer battle. And I sat down, Charlie sat, I mean, uh, Cardi sat down, and uh, Charlie started talking. And he probably told these stories many times, but I had not read the book, I Fought with Custer, which was his story, 
That came out in that same year of 1947. So all of these stories, some of which are in the book, Charlie told. And it was a, it was a fantastic experience. He said he worshipped Captain Benteen. And every story he told, that came through. Captain Benteen was his great hero. And uh, he, they were uh, on what's called Reno Hill, which is four miles from where Custer was wiped out. And when they collected there, they didn't know what had happened to Custer, but their only recourse was to try to dig in and the pack train, get the packs off and make them as barricades because the Indians surrounded them from various places there from which they could fire. And for the rest of that day, the two sides kept firing back and forth. Charlie had scooped out with his buddy a uh, shallow depression to lie in and shoot. And uh, they made it until nightfall when the Indians disappeared. And during the night, they uh, tried to dig in better because they knew they were coming back. Well, they did. Just at dawn the next day, bang, the first shot. And there was an Indian up there, hidden that Charlie believed had singled him out as a special target because the bullets were coming pretty close. In fact, a bullet hit his buddy Jones next to him and killed him. And uh, another one hit Charlie's carbine stock and shattered it. Charlie got <clears throat> Jones's carbine and fired back at him. So this went on for a little while, but uh, as the day went on, it got hotter and hotter, and uh, the wounded started crying for water because the water had run out. And Benteen said, I want 17 volunteers to get water for the wounded. And so Charlie was one who came up and volunteered. He was assigned by Ben Teen as one of four men whose assignment was to get on the rim because the Indians were in the uh, brush along the river. They were firing up. Get up there and draw their fire while others went down the ravine to get water. So Charlie stood there with them. He said, the bullets, he's telling me these stories. Well, the bullets were really zipping up those four men, but they, none of them got hit. Some of the ones who went down the ravine to the river did get hit. But they got water for the enlist for the uh, wounded. Well, the fight went on throughout the day, and uh, Benteen saw that a bunch of Indians were gathering in the uh, ravine to make an attack against his part of the line. So he got his company lined up and made a counterattack. Charlie went with them and they drove that bunch of Indians away so that they didn't. And uh, I remember Charlie said, uh, 
Captain Benteen came to my uh, to my uh, barricade and he said, uh, Charlie, stand up here and look at all of those Indians around. <laughs> And Charlie got up, but he didn't stay very long. <laughs> and uh, as the day began to fade, Benteen said to Charlie, come over here and stand at attention. So Charlie got up, they were firing, and he stood at attention in front of Benteen. Captain Benteen said, I am giving you a battlefield promotion to sergeant, which he did right there. And uh, that pretty much was the end of the battle. Of course, the next day, they found out what had happened to Custer. But the focus here is that Charlie Benteen, or Charlie Windolph, was telling me all of these stories. The young kid, 17 years old, an old man, 97 years old, who had actually been in the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And that is a very memorable event in my career. I have been a Custer addict all of my life and to have known and talked with a man who had fought in the Battle of the Little Bighorn is something unusual, and I think maybe that's it. <laughs>